In this video, we'll deploy a Horizon Edge, which is the thin edge part of the Horizon Cloud Next Gen architecture. It securely connects end users to their virtual desktops and apps in a cloud platform, such as Microsoft Azure. It also connects to the Horizon Control Plane so that administrators can create, manage, and assign those virtual desktops and apps. Now, there are a lot of prerequisites that need to be met and preparatory tasks that need to be done before you can deploy one of these puppies. All of the previous videos in this series are part of those prerequisites. In addition, there are some prerequisites that we did not make videos about, and so I want to point those out. Most of these have to do with networking. For a complete list of all the requirements, see the documentation topic called Requirements Checklist for Deploying a Microsoft Azure Edge. And also see the topic called Microsoft Azure Deployments Horizon Edge, Preparing to Deploy. When you're ready, log in to Cloud Services, launch the Workspace ONE service, and manage the Horizon Cloud service. Click Select on the Horizon Cloud service tile, scroll down, and click Start Deployment. I guess another way to get here is to go to Resources, Capacity, and then add a Horizon Edge. I'll paste in a name that I want to use for my Edge. This stands for Tech Marketing, Horizon Cloud, Next Gen, US East, and my domain. Click Next. For Azure Subscription, I'll Add New, and then I'm going to go to the Azure Portal because I want to name it after my subscription. And I want to be sure of the name. Ah, uh, there can't be spaces. I'll put in some hyphens. To paste in the subscription ID, I'll go back to the Azure portal and use the icon for copying to clipboard. Paste that in. For Azure Cloud Type, there are only two choices. Mine is Azure Commercial. For Azure Region, select the region closest to your end users. Mine is East US. For Directory ID, that's the parent management group for the subscription. You can also find it in the Azure Active Directory, soon to be renamed Entra ID, and there it's called the Tenant ID. Copy that, paste it in. For the Service Principal Application ID, to find it in the Azure Portal, in Active Directory or Entra ID, go down to App Registrations, All Applications, and I have so many that I need to start typing in the name. I'll click the name to go to its details and use the icon to copy the application ID. Paste that in. For the application key, they want the client secret. In an earlier video, I showed you how to create this and warned you to copy it down somewhere because if you go over to the service principles, certificates, and secrets and look in the value field, you will see that you can't copy it from there anymore. So once you figure out where you put it, copy it and paste it into the wizard. Click Add, click Next. We're not going to have secondary providers, so click Next. For Networks, click Select. We want this last one down here. Click Save, click Next. For Site, we can just make up a name. Click Next. For Connectivity, select Internet and click Next. For Horizon Edge Gateway, turn off Enable High Availability. We don't need that, especially in a test environment. For Cluster Outbound Type, NAT Gateway is correct. Let me show you how to make sure in the Azure Portal. Search for Virtual Networks, and I have so many, I need to search on the name of it. Click the name and go to Subnets. Click the Management Subnet, and see over in this panel, it shows the name of the NAT Gateway associated with this Management Subnet. So there is one set up. For User Assigned Managed Identity, which we created in an earlier video in this series, let's go see that in the Azure Portal. Search for Managed Identities, and it's this one. If we check its Azure role assignments, we can verify that we have the network contributor role at the scope of the resource group for the VNet and the managed identity operator role at the scope of the subscription. Okay, so we'll select that one in the wizard. In the networking section, we've got to select the network again and select the management subnet. For service cider, I'll just enter the same thing as shown in the example. And for pod cider, I'll enter the same thing as shown in the example. These are internal IPs. For AKS cluster, I'll use the default name they gave it, which is named after the edge name I gave it. 
For Edge Services FQDN, I'll enter the name I decided to give it. Yes, we want to use SSO, which I showed you how to configure in an earlier video. Select the name of the SSO configuration, click Deploy, and cross your fingers. Deployment of the Edge Gateway has started. Click Next. On to the Unified Access Gateway. For access type, we want external access over the internet. Public IP is enabled, but we don't know what the IP is yet. For Gateway VMs, enter the name that you are planning to use for the load balancer. This needs to have been set up in advance because you also need to have a certificate that goes with that name. It can be in PEM or PFX format. My IT guy got that for me. I'll browse to and select it. For VM model and number of VMs, the default is fine. For virtual network, you have to select the VNet once again. And now you also need to select each of the subnets, VM, management, and DMZ. We're not using a proxy. Click Save. And the deployment is in progress and will take about 20 minutes. OK, we can go check the progress on the Resources Capacity page. Ah, the Unified Access Gateway deployment is done and dusted. We'll refresh it. I've sped things up for this video. Now the Edge deployment is ready to use. Click the Edge name to go to the details. Scroll down and click the icon for copying the Unified Access Gateway FQDN and paste that into an email along with its new static IP address and ask your IT person to create a record for it in the public-facing DNS. This is going to be the front-end public IP address for when users try to connect. And also make sure the internal DNS has that static IP mapped. Also in the internal DNS, Make sure that the Horizon Edge Gateway Load Balancer IP shown here maps to its FQDN. And there you have it. With everything set up, you can now start creating some virtual apps and desktops and assigning them to end users. For more Horizon Cloud technical resources, be sure to visit techzone.omnisa.com. <laughs>